Now, I'm going to talk about another important teaching of mine. Anaenda kuzungumzia mafundisho mengine ya muhimu. But this will take more time. Na hii itachukua muda mrefu. So be prepared for that. Jiandae kwa hiyo. Generally is separated in a few days. It's divided into a few days teaching to finish this teaching. Aha, haya mafundisho yanagawa kwa siku kadhaa ili kumaliza yamalizike kufunzwa. It's called joyful victory. Ni inaitwa kwamba ushindi unaopatikana katika furaha. It is a teaching to help people realize that it's not very hard for them to start serving God. Awe, katika mafundisho yangu wanaona kwamba sio ngumu sana kuanza kuhudumu katika huduma. How to build up people to serve God is not very difficult. Because a lot of people think, well, there are too many problems in my life. I, I cannot serve God. And this teaching is divided into three sections, three parts. Okay, the first part is that God sorry okay the first part is God loves us God has uh, God provides for us and he has a plan a wonderful plan for us so this okay so if God loves us and he provides for us and he has a wonderful plan. Kama Mungu anatu anatupenda, anaweza kuwezesha kupata na kuna mipango mizuri katika maisha yetu. We can relax in God. Tunaweza tulia katika Mungu. We can trust that God will help us. Tunaweza elewa kwamba Mungu atatusaidia. And then the next part, the second section, aha, kipengele cha pili, is to take care of different problems in life. Ni kushughulikia uh, matatizo tofauti tofauti katika maisha yetu. And the third part is then we can have the fruit of Holy Spirit and also fruit of ministry. Aha. Kipengele cha tatu ni kwamba sasa tunaweza kuwa na matunda ya Roho Mtakatifu na tuwe na matunda pia ya huduma. Because many people say I don't have the ability, I don't have the resource to serve God. Aha, mwe watu wanasema kwamba sioni muhimu ana sioni haja ya kumtumikia Mungu. That they say I'm too weak. Wengine wanasema kwamba mimi ni mdhaifu. So the first part is saying we can, you know, we are loved by God. Ha, kipengele cha kwanza kinasema kwamba tunapendwa na Mungu. Psalm 139 verse 5. Psalm 139 verse 5. Zaburi 139 mstari wa 5. Zaburi 139 He's in front of us and behind us and he's laying his hand upon us. Aha, yeye ako pamoja nasi na natufunika mana tuwekelea mikono yake. So he's ministering to us all the time. Ana utudumia shishi kila wakati. Before we were a Christian, God draw us to him, to believe in him. Kwa kabla swalo te mungu, ana tuitaji tu muamini. After we believe in Jesus, even though we sin, God continue to work in our hearts. Ha, ha. Bado kumwamini Mungu hata tunapotenda dhambi Mungu anaendelea kututumikia. So he help us all the time. Anatusaidia kila wakati. And anytime we praise God, na wakati wote tunapompendeza Mungu, we can experience a stronger presence of God. Ah, tunaishi nguvu mzito za Mungu. And also uh, Isaiah 49 verse 15. Isaiah 49 mstari wa 15. Isaiah 49 mstari wa 15. Can a woman forget her nursing child and not have compassion on the son of her womb? Surely she may forget, yet I will not forget you. Ha, kama vile mwanamke anaweza sahau kumtengeneza mtoto wake na ashikue na ule upendo kwa kija mtoto wake ama kwa mimba yake, anasema kwamba mimi sitawasahau. So it's saying that God will always remember us. Ya, anasema kwamba Mungu atatukumbuka kila wakati. And he remembers us in a loving way. Anatukumbuka katika ile njia ya upendo. Like a mother remembering a child. Kama vile mama anavyomkumbuka mtoto wake. Now, first we ourselves need to live in the love of God. Sisi kwanza tunastahili kuishi katika upendo wa Mungu. Now, in other verses, Zephaniah 3:17. Ah. Uh, ni ama safania, tatu mstari wa 16. 
He will take great delight in you. He will quiet you with his love. He will rejoice over you with singing. Ya kwamba atakuchukulia katika njia ya udhamana na atakutuliza na upendo wake na atafurahia wewe katika uimbaji. Now here it talks about God has in, having a you know a emotional love toward us. Ha ina sumuza kwamba Mungu anakuwa na mawazo mazuri upande wetu. He has positive emotions toward us. Anakuwa na mawazo mazuri upande wetu. That he rejoice over us with singing. Atafurahia kwetu katika kuimba. He sing over us. Yesu ana Mungu anatuimbia. Now there are many other verses about the love of God. Hakuna maana vipengele ama chapter nyingi kuhusu upendo wa Yesu. But very often Christians don't think of the love of God. Lakini kuna wakristo ambao hawafikirii kuhusu upendo wa Mungu. They think the love of God is too far away. Wanafikiria kwamba upendo wa Mungu uko mbali nao. I cannot touch. Hawezi kuuza. Now there are five areas that we can touch God's love. Kuna sehemu tano ambazo tunaweza kuuza upendo wa Mungu. You can write down. Unaweza andika chini. First from nature. Aha, ya kwanza ni nature. Hey. Nature, what's nature? Maumbile. Oh, pero ni yapaza ni maumbile. So we can see God's love from the food. Ano na kumbwa upendo amu kutoka katika chakula. He create delicious food, right? Ali tengeneza chakula kitamu. Do you like food? Muna pera chakula. Amatuliza muna pera chakula. Food tastes good, right? Hai chakula kina. Na ladamzuri. God designed the food so we can enjoy it. Mungu alitengeneza chakula kwamba tuweze kufurahia. So every time when you eat or drink, wakati wote unapokula ama kunywa, you can enjoy God's love. Unafurahia upendo wa Mungu. Is drinking bring does drinking bring comfort to our throat? Si kunywa kunaleta utulivu katika koo zetu. And then our body is wonderfully made. Our body is wonderfully made. Aha, mili yetu imetengenezwa katika njia ya ya kupendeza. Then we can see, see beautiful flowers around us. Tunaweza ona vitu vizuri vizuri karibu na sisi. And we can hear beautiful music. Tunaweza sikiza muziki mtamu na masikio yetu. And we can produce beautiful sound. Tunaweza toa sauti nyororo kama ya ninga. Oh hallelujah. Hallelujah. Yes. Now, if you Relax, your voice can be very beautiful. Now, all this is from the creation of God. And our brain can think so much and remember so much. And also people have feelings. Do you have good feelings toward your family members? Or to your dog in your home. Ha, ata katika umbo zako, ukuyona umbo yako na fikiri na mnagan. Or good feelings toward your house. Ama unapua na mawazia mzuri kwa ukiwa katika nyumba yako. Or good feelings toward your friends. Unapua na mawazo mzuri unapua kutana na rafiki yako. Because God made us that we can have feelings toward people. Mungu alituumba ili tuweze kuwa na isia katika watu. That's wonderful creation. The first Nature and creation. Aha, maumbile ilo ni kipengele cha kwanza. And the second is the redemption of Jesus. Aha, kipindi ni kwamba ku kuteswa kwa Yesu Kristo. That He died for our sins so we can have eternal life. Ali kufa kwa dami zetu ili tu kawaze kupata uzima wa milele. It's a great, great blessing. Ilo ni ni baraka ku. And then thirdly, from the Bible. Tat ya tatu kutoka tukatika Biblia. The Bible told us how God loves us. How God loves the Israelites and loves the church. And number four, when we pray to God or praise God, we can experience His peace and comfort. Oh, hallelujah. Hallelujah. Now, if you learn to open your heart, you can experience this joy any time you pray. Wakati unapofungua roho yako, unaweza ishi huu hii amani wakati unapoomba. You can experience comfort to the body. Unaweza ishi kutulia katika mwili. 
you can experience burning school way. So that's good that any time we can experience him. Now many people did not think of that. And I told people, you, it's better that you know you want to experience the presence of God when we pray. Stand, stand to pray to God. Now, now try to do it now. Can you stand up now? To simame wote kwa miguze tu tutaribu kufanya jinsi anapo sema. Unapo jaribu kuomba mungu na jaribu unakuwa flexible na chilia mwili unafraia. Quiet Jesus from your heart. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Asante Yesu Asante Yesu Asante Yesu Asante Yesu Asante Yesu I love you Jesus Nakupenda Yesu Nakupenda Yesu Nakupenda Yesu Nakupenda Yesu Nakupenda Yesu Oh Yesu so wonderful Oh Yesu wewe ni madamana Yesu is so wonderful Yes, we so From the Holy Spirit. Thank you, Jesus. When you feel the body swing, 
It's the power of the Holy Spirit. You relax more, you open your heart more. The swing will be more powerful. And you can see that anytime you open your heart, oh, you feel the power of God. Oh, Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Do you feel this way? This way actually came from the power of God. This way came from the power of God. You feel the body, feel the body. You feel the body swaying. It helps us greatly. It helps us greatly because when you feel the power swaying, you know, you know it's from God because God cares about us. And he he cares. Cares. Now you come forward, Lord, you come forward. Stand. Raise your hand. Close your eyes. Oh. 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 Hallelujah. Hallelujah. He's feeling some pressure, air, air entering in his body. Air? Mm. <laughs> <laughs> you mean like something flow through yeah. in your body? Yeah. How does that feel? Nice idea. What kind of thing? Nice idea. He's feeling his body being light mm -hmm. and his uh, chest relaxed. Okay. Now, so that came from Jesus taking away burdens and, you know, and the body, uh, God moving your body. And then, so we can experience the peace and the power and the comfort and burdens go away. And then as time goes on, it can become more and more powerful. Okay. Okay. So I want to say is we can experience his presence when we come to him. Okay, na sema kwamba tunaweza ishi nguvu zake wakati tunapokuja karibu na yeye. And even when we sin, we can experience the Holy Spirit speaking to us to guide us not to sin. Hata tunapoingia katika dhambi, tutaishi roho wa Mungu ananazungumza nasi kwamba tusitende dhambi. So we see that God means to do us when we sin and when we don't sin when we come to God. So wakati tunapokuja Mungu Mungu anatusungumzia wakati tunatenda na hata wakati ambapo atutenzi atutendi dhambi tunaishi nguvu za Mungu. Okay so I hope that you all believe that God is loving us all the time. Anatumaini kwamba sisi wote sasa tume tumeamini kwamba Mungu anatujali katika maisha yetu. And then number 5 just now I give you number 4. Kipengele cha 5 is in your daily life when you have problems you pray to God to, for help 
And have you experienced help from God in your daily life? Ya kwamba katika maisha yako unapokuwa na matatizo mengi, unapomuomba Mungu, unaanza kuishi nguvu za Mungu katika maisha yako. Have you experienced help from God? Ah, ushai ishi uh, usaidizi kutoka kwa Mungu. Anauliza swali. Umeshawahi ishi usaidizi wakati umekuwa na mizigo, umekuwa na na mambo mengi. Ushawahi ishi nguvu za Mungu zinapokutembelea na kutulia? So if you experience the help from God that's from his love right Mhm Unapo So I hope you remember these five areas that we can see the love of God So nadhani unakumbuka hizi vipengele tano ambazo zinatokana na upendo wa Mungu That from nature Mkwanza ni kutoka katika maumbile Then from uh, his Jesus redemption kutokana katika mateso ya Yesu Kristo from the Bible, kutoka katika Biblia, and then from when we pray to God, inapotoka na kutoka kwa wakati tunapomwomba Mungu, and also from uh, when we ask God to help us, wakati tunapomuuliza Mungu atusaidie. That have you experienced God's love like that? Ushawahi ishi upendo wa Mungu katika hiyo hali? Now, Christians all know God loves us. Christians all know that God loves us. Ha, kwa Kristo watu wanastahili kujua kwamba Mungu anatupenda. But there are different levels we enter the love of God. But kuna kuna vipengele tofauti ambavyo uh, wakati tunapo kuna mambo matano tofauti ambayo Mungu tunapoishi uh, upendo wa Mungu. The first level is knowing God's love. You can write this down. The first level kipengele cha kwanza ni unapo knowing knowing unapojua Mungu. Unapojua upendo wa Mungu. Okay. The second level is believing that God loves us. Kipengele cha pili ya kwamba unapoamini ya kwamba Mungu anakupenda. Now many people know God's love but they don't believe. Wengi wanajua kwamba Mungu anatupenda lakini hawaamini. And the second level is believing. And the third level is believing God's love even in difficult times. Aha, kipengele cha tatu ya kwamba uamini upendo wa Mungu hata ukiwa katika hali ngumu. Now many people believe in God's love but when they are in trouble they say God is not loving. Aha, wengi wanakumbuka upendo wa Mungu lakini wakati wanapokuwa katika majaribu ama matatizo wanasema kwamba Mungu hanipendi. And then number 4, kipengele cha 4, experience God's love in when we come close to him. Aha, kuishi upendo wa Mungu wakati tunaposongea karibu na Mungu. When we experience his peace, his comfort, burdens go away, all this are expression of God's love. Tunapoishi nguvu za Mungu na utulivu wa Mungu tunapokuja karibu na yeye. Okay? So so that's experience God's love. And then number 5 is motivated by God's love. Motivated by God's love. Aha, kuwa kujazwa na upendo wa Mungu. That we are motivated to love God more and love people more. Tu tuko na na ule uwezo wa kupenda Mungu zaidi na kupenda watu zaidi. Okay? Now, what I want to say is this. Please open the windows. Fungua hiyo madirisha tafadhali. What I want to say is many Christians know God's love. Ah, wa Kristo wengi wanajua kwa wanajua upendo wa Mungu. But they are not motivated by God's love. Lakini wana wana wanakuwa na hisia na upendo wa Mungu and they're not enjoying God's love she our 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 frai ama our frai ni upendo wa Mungu okay actually i should add number 5 is enjoy and then number 6 is motivated so number 5 is enjoy God's love aha kipengele cha neno ni kufurahia upendo wa Mungu now what does it mean you enjoy God's love? When you pray, you experience the peace, you say, oh, it's so enjoyable. When we eat or drink, you say, oh, I'm, ex I'm enjoying God's love. When we have the forgiveness of sin and the freedom of the heart, we say I'm enjoying God's love. Wakati tunaposamehewa dhambi na tunawekwa huru katika mioyo zetu tunasema tunafurahia upendo wa Mungu. Why is it important for us to enjoy God's love and to be motivated by God's love? Ni kwa nini tufurahie upendo wa Mungu na tuwe tunachangamshwa na upendo wa Mungu? As I said earlier, the distinction of the grace and the law, law of God. Kama alivyosema hapo awali tofauti kati ya neema na sheria. It's very natural for Christians to say I have a lot to do. Ni ni maumbile ya kwamba tu 
Unasema kwamba niko na mengi ya kufanya. I have to do better and better. Ninasema kufanya vizuri na vizuri. But I'm not doing well enough. Lakini sifanye vizuri zaidi. Then we blame ourselves. Tunaanza kujilaumu sisi wenyewe. But when we believe God really loves us now. Lakini tunapoamini kwamba Mungu anatupenda sasa. And he's happy with us. Na kwa anafurahia. Then every day we can say na kila siku tunaweza sema God is loving me. Mungu anatupenda. Ha ha ha. Ha Mungu anatupenda. Ha ha ha. Unaanza kufurahia maisha kwa sababu unaelewa Mungu ana anakupenda. Let me ask you, do you enjoy life? Anakuuliza, wewe unafurahia maisha? No, we are, we are all living. We are all living. This is what it means. But are you living like this? Oh, I'm so happy. Unaishi ukisema kweli niko na furaha ama unaishi kujua? I'm so happy. Niko na furaha. God is loving me. Mungu ananipenda. And I enjoy serving God. Ninafurahia kumtumikia Mungu. Because God is always happy. Kwa sababu Mungu anako na furaha. Whatever I do to people jojoto machofanya kwa wanadamu give them positive influence itawapatia motisha wa kumtukuza Mungu when we are enjoying God's love everything become enjoyable aha tunapofurahia upendo wa Mungu kila kitu kinakuwa cha furaha so i hope you all see the christian life the most important thing is what paul said to understand how deep How high how wide is God's love? Aha, anajua kwamba tunapoishi maisha ambayo ni mazuri katika neema tunaona kwamba kila kitu kitakuwa cha dhamana ama kitakuwa cha furaha katika maisha yetu. And the Bible says as high as the heaven is above the earth so great it is love to do who love him. Aha, maandiko Biblia inasema kwamba ya kwamba kama vile Bingu iko juu ya dunia basi na neema ya Mungu nayo itakuwa nyingi kwa wale wanaompenda. Most people understand God's love to this level. Watu wengi wanaelewa upendo wa Mungu kwa kiwango hiki. Look at my hand. Look at. Waangalia mikono. Unaona hapa kati wangu. They they think of God's love as being so much. Wanapenda wanajua wanafikia kwamba Mungu kuwapenda ni hivi kiasi kidogo. And some people even doubt God's love. Ha wengine pia wanashuku upendo wa Mungu and complain to God God hasn't given me what I need. Na wanalalamika kwa Mungu Mungu anipeje nyenye nataka. But the Bible says it's high as the heaven. Mungu can never reach it. Biblia inasema kwamba iko juu katika bingu mtu hawezi fikia. We can understand God's love for each day. Tunaweza elewa upendo wa Mungu kila wakati. I you know I find that it's something I need to convince myself every day so I enter God's love deeper and deeper. Anajua kwamba kuna kitu ambacho anastahili kukifanya kila siku ili aingie katika upendo ndani ndani na ndani kila wakati. So when I get up I always say God is loving me now. Wakati anapoelewa anasema Mungu ananipenda sana. Thank you Jesus. Asante Yesu. I love you Jesus. Nakupenda Yesu. I need you Jesus. Nakuhitaji Yesu. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. You are with me now. Uko na mimi mimi sasa. So wonderful. Uko wa dhamana. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. So every day I wake up I would declare God's love. Wakati anapo kila wakati anapoamka anatangaza upendo wa Mungu. And I know that difficulties doesn't mean God doesn't love me. Ha, wakati anapokuwa katika majaribu haimaanisha kwamba Mungu hapendi. This is important point you write this down. Aha, andika hii ni ni kipengele cha maana. Because many people say I've difficulties it means that God doesn't love me. Aha, wengi wanasema kwamba niko na shida mingi inamaanisha Mungu anipendi. You know, we have difficulties because when Adam said, God said that when you work on a field you will have thorns and thistles. Aha. Wa uh, uh, sio dhambi kwa sababu wakati Mungu alipomumba Adamu na Hawa akaweka katika shamba akawaambia mtakuwa na hii na hii na hii because of sin of all mankind ah uh, kwa sababu ya dhambi ya wanadamu in this world there's always suffering ndio sababu ulimungu wote unateseka but we can always get strength from the lord lakini tunaweza pata nguvu kutoka kwa mungu and we can always experience his peace and love and help tunaweza hizi nguvu zake na upendo wake so even though there are difficulties hata kama kuna madaribu ama hapo doesn't deny god's love haizui upendo wa mungu okay so joyful victory the most important point is God loves us all the time. Kipengele cha muhimu sana ni kujua kwamba Mungu anatupenda kila wakati. We can enjoy his love. Tunaweza furahia upendo wake. And be strengthened by his love. Na tutiwe nguvu na upendo wake. Okay, now the second point God will provide for us. Kipengele cha pili imekuwa ni kwamba Mungu anafanya mara gani? 
God is providing for us. Mungu anatuwezesha kupata. Now there are many Bible verses that talk about that. Kuna vipengele katika katika Biblia ambazo zinazungumza kuhusu hilo. Now the Bible promises that he will you know provide a special way to those who obey him and follow him. Ah maandiko yanatuahidi kwamba Mungu atawezesha wale ambao wanamtii na kumwabudu ako na mipango mizuri na. Matthew 6:33 Matayo sita talati na tasi. Seek ye first the kingdom of God and His righteousness, and all these things will be added to you. Utafuteli kwanza ufalme wa mungu na haya mengine yote mtazidishiwa. Some Christians say, I believe in Jesus, but I still suffer. Aha, wengu wa Kristo wengu anasema kwa badina muamini mungu, lakini badu nateseka. Because they yell at the people. Matayo sita talati na tasi. They have sadness and anger. Wakona uzuni na wakona ashira. They don't pray to... The Lord much. So they don't experience much help from God. So how party But the more we seek the kingdom of God, that means we want to bring the gospel to more people to enter the kingdom of God. And the second meaning of seeking the kingdom of God is to let God be our Lord of our heart. Where God is the king, there is his kingdom. So if I obey God totally, submit to him totally, there is his kingdom. When I let God be my Lord totally, wakati naruhusu Mungu awe mfalme he will provide for me in every way atanisaidia ku ataniwezesha kupata kila ambacho nahitaji i see poverty in kenya anaona umaskini kenya you know one key is that when christians really follow god totally ha swali ni kwamba kweli tunamfuata Mungu kamilifu and put down adultery or premarital sex and, and put down premarital sex or adultery Aha, na tuweke chini mambo ya usinifu na ngono ya mapema. And when you let God be the Lord of the church and of the land, na tuwatu kuhusu mungu awe kiongozi wa kanisa na maisha yetu. And God's wisdom will guide God's people how to bring more prosperity to the country. Na hekima ya mungu itatuwezesha kuleta maendeleo katika inji yetu ya kenya. So you know how to provide for the country. So unajua jinzi ya uzalisa katika inji. Okay, so that's the second part. And the third part, the third part of joyful victory. Is that God has a wonderful plan for every question? Mungu ako na mitango mizuri katika kila swali. Psalm 139 verses 16 to 17. Zaburi mia moja zala sina tisa, mstari wa kumi na sita na kumi na saba. Zaburi mia moja zala sina tisa. Mustari wa kumina sita na kumina saba. All the days ordained for me were written in your book before one of them came to be. How precious to me are your thoughts, God. How vast is the sum of them. Ya kwamba siku zote ambazo simeinuliwa kwangu na simeandikwa katika kitabu. Hata kabla, kabla azija kuwa, came to be. Hata kabla azija kuwa, ya nizadamana kwangu, na mawazo yako na Mungu ako na upendo na mambo hayo okay what it says here is that all the days of our life has been written in God's book siku zetu za maisha zimeandikwa katika kitabu so in heaven is written for us katika mbinguni imeandikwa and one day when we go to heaven we'll find out God's wonderful plan for our life Ha wakati utakapofanikiwa kutazama utajua kwamba Mungu ako na mipango mizuri na maisha yetu. How we can be great in the kingdom of God. Jinsi tunavyoweza kuwa wakuu katika ufalme wa Mungu. But many people did not believe that. Lakini watu wengi hatuamini hiyo. And they did not follow that. Na hatufuati hiyo. And they wasted God's plan. Na wana haribu mipango ya Mungu. God uh, no people won't enter God's plan automatically. Watu people 
People won't enter God's plan automatically. Automatic, eh? In Romans 12, 1 to 2, <laughs> there it says that, Romans 12, 1 to 2, <laughs> so when we offer our bodies as a living sacrifice, <laughs> and do not conform to the pattern of the world, <laughs> but be transformed by the renewal of your mind, <laughs> then you can Concern the perfect, good, and pleasing will of God. So what it means is that if people don't dedicate their life to God, people follow the world, people fall in sin, and their life is not transformed, they cannot know God's plan. Nor can they enter God's plan. Now, let me tell you this. We can enter God's plan deeper and deeper. When I first started as a pastor, I just saw that I preach every week and then teach Bible study every week. What can I do? I, I, I cannot, you know, think of how I can serve God more effectively. But when I experience the Holy Spirit, when an evangelist laid hand on me, I felt great power enter me like electricity. And I felt the love of God so powerful on me. I cried for a long time. And I said, I didn't know I can experience God like that. And after that, I started to spend much more time praying. And then when I pray for people, I see people change. And they experience God right away. And I see that, you know, I pray for the people in my church. And the spiritual life of many were changed. And uh, many of them enter ministry. Right now there are at least, let me see, one, two, three, there are three missionaries from my small church when I experienced the Holy Spirit. And, and there were a few pastors from that church. So when I pray for them to experience a transformation of the Holy Spirit, they see that God is so powerful. And they were changed by the Holy Spirit. Then I see that I can enter a higher level. And also when I pray, God gave me many teachings. I received teachings like just now the distinction of the God. The grace and the Lord God. This joyful victory. This joyful victory. And other teachings. And then I find that I start to, you know, not only build up the spiritual life of people, I notice that many pastors actually find it hard to have strength. And I start to encourage and guide pastors. And I put my teachings online on YouTube. And then Pastors from different parts of the world contacted me for help. And God opened a way for me to go and do training in different places. Amen. 
just like what I'm doing right here now. Kama vile hapa sahi. So I see that God is leading me to enter a higher level of his plan. Sasa Mungu anaanza kumuinua katika kiwango kikuu katika mipango yake. That I can affect more pastors and leaders. Help them to enjoy the love of God, be motivated by God's love. And know how to raise up people's spiritual life. And I'm asking God to guide me to a higher and higher level. That you too, you can do it too. God's plan for you is much greater than what you are doing now. Do you believe that? Yes. Now when people's eyes are open, they suddenly see we can do greater things for God. Then they have more faith and they dedicate their life to God more and they can serve God to a high level and they can motivate people who are lazy, who are sinning in the congregation to change our example could motivate people to change so your ministry will go higher and higher okay so joyful victory has three parts first part is live in a love provision and the perfect plan of God with this first part you have faith now what is faith God show me that God taught me what is faith. Uh-huh. Faith is when God promises I trust in him. Now some people think of faith like this. They will say, I have to believe. I have to cry to God. I believe God will do great things. They think that it's their own power energy to believe strongly. Now let me ask you, if you have a very good relationship with your wife or husband, and she, he or she said he'll come at 12 noon. I'll come again. And then he or she says that he will come at 12 noon. You don't have to say, I believe she will come at 12 noon. You just say, he or she will come at 12 noon. And then you say, I believe she will come at 12 noon. I don't doubt about it. Now same with God. When we pray for people, God will work. Like the other day we pray, four people experience healing. Now I have no assurance by myself that it will happen. But I know that when God promised, it will happen. So write this down. Faith is when God promised, I trust in Him. Or in a simple way, when God promised, I believe. And then another, you write this down, this is good people. When God works, I believe. Another. Yeah, so, can you say this again? Faith is, when God promised, I believe. When God works, I believe. Sema hivi, wakati mungu anahidi, ninaamini. Wakati mungu anatenda, ninaamini. Ha. I put it in another way, is when God promises, I relax. When God works, I relax. Aha. 
Now when you have faith in God like that, you will say, Unasema, God cares about the church more than I do. Hey, Mungu kanisa kuliko jinsi mimi say it with him. Say it with him. Murudia nyuma yangu. Musemi na mimi. Say it. You can tell them to say it. After you. Yes. Muongee nyuma yangu. Sawa. Murudia ninaposema. Yes. Say it. Ai amesema ya kwamba wakati yani Mungu anafanya kuliko jinsi mimi ninavyofanya kanisani. Aya tuseme hivi, Mungu anafanya katika kanisa kuliko jinsi mimi ninavyofanya kanisani. The church is God's and tell them to say after you. The church is God's. Kanisa ni la Mungu. God cares about the church. Mungu anajali kanisa. God will bless the church when I follow him. Mungu atabariki kanisa linalomfuata. So in that way we can relax in our ministry. Katika hiyo hali tunaweza tulia katika huduma wetu. And I know that great things will happen. Na najua kwamba vitu vikubwa vitafanyika. When I follow him. Wakati ninapomfuata. Great things will happen. Say it together. Great things will happen. Sema na mimi vitu vikubwa vitafanyika. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Relax in him. Nitatulia ndani mwake. Trust in him. Nitamwamini yeye. God will accomplish his work. Mungu atatimiza kazi yake. Okay, now this is not empty belief. It's believing in God's promise. So I relax. Okay, now we go to the second part. We'll just go a little bit and then we have to stop when, when we start the lunch. Yeah. Okay, so just the second part is. Now, remember the three parts of joyful victory? Aha, anasema anasema kwamba tutaenda tutatufanya kipengele moja alafu tuende tukule lunch na anauliza kwamba unakumbuka vipengele vitatu vya ambavyo furaha huleta ushindi. Did you say the three parts? No. Okay. Now the three parts are living a love provision and plan of God, a perfect plan of God. Vipengele vitatu ni kwamba kuishi katika upendo, Mungu anapeana and the third one plan, perfect plan. Aha, Mungu ako na mipango. And the second part is take care of different problems in life. Kipengele cha pili ni jinsi ya kushughulikia matatizo tofauti tofauti katika maisha yetu. And the third part is then we can be used by God. Then people can be used by God. Watu wanaweza tumiwa na Mungu. Okay? Now so we can go into that because this is helpful when you raise some people in the church. Hii ni ya muhimu wakati unapoinua watu katika kanisa. It's not just a one time teaching. Sio mafundisho tu ya wakati mmoja. You help people to believe that God loves us all the time. Unasaidia watu kuelewa kwamba Mungu anatupenda kila wakati. And God will provide for us so we don't Mungu worry. Mungu atat, atat, atatuwezesha kupata kila wakati. And God is a perfect plan that we can follow. Ya kwamba Mungu ako na mipango ya maana katika maisha yetu. When we take care of our problems, wakati tunaposhughulikia matatizo, we then we can be trained and start to be are uh, serving God and be blessing the other people. Aha, tunaweza wafundisha ama tunaweza wafundisha kanisa ili iweze saidia watu wengine pia. Do you want your people in your church to be growing and serving God and blessing other people? Mnahitaji watu katika makanisa yenu wakuwe wanakuwa na kutukuza Mungu na kusaidia watu wengine. So so joyful victory is a, a simple way to tell them this is what you do and then your life will be raised up. Aha, ma kipengele hiki cha uh, furaha inayoleta ushindi ni ni kizuri cha kueleza watu ya kwamba unaweza fanya hivi ili maisha yako yainuliwe. Okay. Okay, now this afternoon we'll continue to talk about this and also about the work of the Holy Spirit, how to pray for people, to lead people to Christ and to change, raise up the spiritual life. Anasema uh, baada ya mamkuli ya mchana tutaendelea kusungumza hiki na pia tutazungumza kuhusu kazi ya Roho Mtakatifu na jinsi unavyoweza ombea watu na watu wabarikiwe. And how to raise up people, how to find people in the church and then raise them up Aha, na jinsi vile unavyoweza pata watu kanisani na uwazaidie wainuke wafikie kiwango kingine. Okay, and all other teachings that 
you find it needed in your ministry. Now, now, I'm going to tell you that 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 I'm going to